Hi, good afternoon. My name is Joanna Nelson, and I'm with the Economic Development Department. I'm the Strategic Programs Manager for the department. And you have tuned in today to one of our Economic Development Department's webinar series. We try to do these at least once a month to highlight special programs around the state, as well as putting a focus on uh, financing opportunities as well. We thought it would be a good idea to highlight the Council of Governments, these organizations that are located in various regions of the state, because they are such fantastic partners of ours, and um, many people don't know what a COG is. So hopefully today we'll get an overview of um, basic information about what they do, the services that they provide, as well as looking at how they are participating in recovery efforts around the COVID-19 pandemic. So very excited to have them all here. Really great opportunity to learn from them. Before we get started, I did wanna mention that we are recording this session. So you will be able to access this on our YouTube channel. I will send the link out to everyone that registered. I will also send out the PDF to your email. So expect that hopefully this afternoon. I do want to encourage everyone to ask questions. So please uh, take some time and put a question into the questions box on the right side of your screen. You should see a little gray horizontal box. Feel free to type those as we go and we will take those at the end of the presentation. Also, we did get your, your questions um, that you submitted when you registered. So we will do our best to get to those as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I did wanna go over a brief highlight of the Economic Development Department. As you can see, our cabinet secretary is Alicia J. Keys and our deputy cabinet secretary is John Clark. And under this divisions uh, title, you can see the, the numerous divisions that are within the Economic Development Department. I wanted to take a moment also to highlight the upcoming events that we have uh, that, the ho that the department is hosting. So um, this week we have a mini series for business owners of color. They're gonna be highlighting CDFIs and credit unions. Our business finance fair is coming up. We'll be focusing on the Southwest region of the state. So if you are a business owner in the Southwest region, or if you are a lender or associated with a financing program, please reach out to us and, and register for that event. Uh, this is a great way to connect with financial opportunities in that region. And, and this is our third one. The next one will be in the Southeastern region of the state. Also, we are right in the middle of our Rural Efficient Business Program, and that, I think our next interview will be uh, December 8th, and we will, I think we are interviewing uh, Red River Brewing. We'll be highlighting energy efficiency tips and connecting with resources around renewable energy and energy efficiency. Fund it. Quarter four meeting is uh, December 10th. Um, and that is coming up and, and this is a really great way that we connect with our partners at the COGS and hear uh, community projects from around the state and look at co collaborative ways of how to fund those projects. And then just wanted to mention our collateral assistance program is open. Businesses that are seeking a commercial loan and have a deficiency in uh, collateral can utilize this program. So please, if you have any questions about these, reach out to us and we would love to talk more about them. And I did want to highlight the Economic Development Regional Reps. These are the department reps that are located throughout the state and their contact is, is right here in the right hand of the screen. And if you don't know them, they are a great entrance into many, many resources and connections. So I wanted to kick things off and introduce our Deputy Cabinet Secretary, John Clark, to offer some welcoming and intro remarks. Thank you, Joanna. 
Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be part of this webinar that we're putting on with the COGS. And I just want to briefly highlight something that we're doing with the COGS. Uh, we are starting a statewide strategic planning effort uh, of an extent that we've never done before at the department. Uh, the department has always had a five-year plan of its own, uh, but we're now working hand in hand with the COGS to do a plan for the state. Uh, this plan for the state is going to have three different components to it. One will be short-term COVID recovery. What do we need to do to get out of this economic crisis that we're in as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic? There will also be a five-year strategic plan, but also we're going to put in there a 20-year plan for how we're going to diversify the economy so that our economy is more resilient and stronger moving forward. The COGS are an integral part of this, and we'll also be reaching out to economic development organizations around the state for input. This plan is intended to be a ground up framework for how the state can move forward in a way that recognizes the significant differences in geography and uh, business uh, assets across the state. So look forward to information coming out from us and from the COGS in the near future, uh, but I'm really happy to be working hand in hand with the COGS on this program. So thank you, and I'll turn it back to you, Joanna. Thanks so much. Okay, so let's get started. I'd like to introduce the Executive Director of the Southwest Council of Government, Priscilla Lucero. Thank you, Joanna, and thank you, John. I really want to commend the State um, Economic Development Department for your partnership and inclusion in everything that you're doing that really benefits all of our entire regions. I think we're really grateful for the partnership because that's how things are accomplished and we have to have that collaboration. So um, I just want to extend my heartfelt thanks for that. So I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar today. We're also known as the New Mexico Association of Regional Councils. And of course, there are seven regions in the state. And so right currently, I am the chair of the New Mexico Association of Regional Councils. I am a short timer. So eventually somebody will be taking over the reins of the state association. So next, Joanna. So I wanted to just kind of give an overview about the councils of governments. As Joanna mentioned, many are unaware of what we really do. And some of our, we have commonalities and we also have differences in each one of our regions. But we were established in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And it's un under statute under, under the Regional Planning Act. There are seven regions in the state. District 1 is Northwest New Mexico Council of Governments. District 2 is North Central New Mexico Economic Development District. District 3 is Mid-Region Council of Governments. District 4 is Eastern Plains Council of Governments. District 5 is Southwest New Mexico Council of Governments. District 6 is Southeastern New Mexico Economic Development District, and District 7 is South Central Council of Governments. So you'll see the difference in the names from an economic development district to a council of governments. It's really one and the same. Some opted to keep the name of the council of governments and some um, actually kept, which is what we're known as on the federal side as an economic development district. So just know that we're all one in the same. We're all economic development districts and we're all councils of government. So we receive some common funding and I think that was important for all of you to, to know. We do receive funding from the state of uh, New Mexico Department of Finance and Administration through local government division. So we do have to be placed in the House Bill 2 budget. And so that uh, that's something that we um, are considered under special appropriations under House Bill 2. And so that's something that we are always looking at to ensure that we're included in the budget. Um, we also have funding from the New Mexico Department of Transportation. That's a, another commonality within our, uh, within our COG regions. And then lastly, we all receive funding from the U.S. Department of Commerce and Economic Development Administration. In this time of economic recovery, I can't stress enough that as economic development districts through the federal programs and uh, EDA is that you really need to understand that relationship that we have with our federal partners uh, through EDA and that's in actually how we receive funding to help 
or how your entity can receive funding based on what we do. And it's critical that in any application that you're doing, that you're partnering with us, number one. Number two, to make sure that you're participating and actually in the inclusion of the economic development strategy, which is a requirement for us from a federal perspective. And this is how we've been able to access some of those CARES dollars that some of, uh, some of our regions have already received. It is my understanding at this point that the CARES money has already been spent, but that's to say there isn't the regular budget money. So I wanna make sure that we're all clear about that. So um, we were established to really provide planning, coordination and technical assistance. So one thing I wanna reiterate is that we're here because of you. So we're really here to provide a helping hand to you in whatever it is that you're doing to make sure that you're successful in whatever your efforts are and improving the quality of life of your communities. So councils of governments and economic development districts cover multiple counties and drawing members from government entities with respective regions that include counties, municipalities, Native American tribes, special districts, such as water districts, soil and water conservation districts, land grants, school districts, and colonias. So sometimes those are based on your geographic region as to who may be a participant in your COG region. And you'll find also that they may vary from region to region. Um, we also assist members by securing or applying or developing and researching federal and state grants. That's a big part of what we do. And on the, a lot of the reasons we do that is because sometimes in the most rural communities, there may be a lack of capacity at the local level, and that's where we can also fill in uh, to provide that assistance. We also provide a venue for convening, training, and facilitation. So, um, and I'll use the Economic Development Department as an example. So if you did something that wanted to go to all the people within a region or a state, then COGS are kind of a one-stop shop. We're a hub in the region. We know who the players are. We know our communities well. We know our, who our elected officials are. And so we can actually disseminate information in, in a very effective and timely manner, and we can ensure that it gets to the right person. Uh, we also provide technical assistance and organizational development for clerks, city and county managers, elected officials, and um, public sector employees. And the one thing we know about all these groups that we're talking about, it's that it's ever changing, right? So, um, so when a new person comes in, then we can provide, be that the organization that can provide the training or all the knowledge that they need in order to do their job better. And I think that's really one of our most valuable assets is that, again, we're the one-stop shop that they can go to and know what's happened in the past and what's happening currently and be able to just jump into their jobs and do what they need to do. Uh, we also collect and analyze data such as census data, traffic counts, and economic development reports. That is something that, again, varies um, from, um, from region to region. We were very active in the census 2020. And so you'll see as we go through the presentations today, some of the differences and what each one of the regions um, actually does. And then we also do coordination of local and regional planning efforts. In some cases, we can be the liaison between the local government and an agency, whether it's federal, state, a nonprofit organization or, or whatever, and, and then bring them together to be able to really come to a common goal and a common, um, a common uh, uh, vision of what we're trying to accomplish. So that's a, a little bit of an overview of the councils of governments. And we certainly do have a history in the state, even though that most people are unaware of what we actually do. And so it's just, it's just difficult. It's a difficult thing to explain because we do a little bit of everything. On to the next slide, Joanna. So here's kind of what is just a, a picture of how it all kind of flows. This is a great picture that Mid-Region Council of Governments did for us for a brochure that we actually um, actually give out at different functions. And you can see where the federal government, state government, association foundations, and how, how the money funnels down to the different local government, uh, councils of governments and economic development districts, and then goes down to show even more some of the entities that we represent. And sometimes I think a graphic can really explain how 
um, how the money funnels and what are the different things that we're working on. And so I wanted to provide this slide as a mechanism to show you how some of this works um, in, in the state of New Mexico. So next slide, Joanna. So that's the overview. And so now we're gonna go into talking about the different um, councils of governments and the different, different regions and partly of some of the members and some of the different things and services that we provide. And then we all, we'll also be talking a little bit about what we're doing in our region around economic recovery efforts to help um, provide you some guidance on, on what we're doing. So if you look at this presentation on the left-hand side, this is, this, is an, um, this is our membership list and you can see ours, not only do we have local governments, we have mutual domestic water consumers associations which are considered special districts, solid waste. Um, we also have a hospital, we have schools that also include not only consolidated school districts, but we have Western New Mexico University and we have a Head Start. So this is a large number of people that and organizations that we service. And I think that's one of the things we're extremely proud of is that our reach is way beyond what any average person could reach. And we do it, um, we do it efficiently and effectively. And the relationships that we've established with these communities is one that COG regions have really benefited from. So some of our contracts that we have currently with the Council of Government is uh, again, I mentioned earlier the Department of uh, Finance and Administration, the New Mexico Department of Transportation. But one that's unique to, to my COG region is I have a contract with New Mexico uh, Mortgage Finance Authority, and that's to provide housing assistance and housing outreach. That's been one of my passions since I started here with the COG. So I work in everything from weatherization to first time home buyer to housing development, and that's kind of um, one of our specialties here. The other thing that's kind of unique to us as well is the New Mexico Early Childhood Education Imagination Library. You probably would not know that, that the literacy program and the, in partnership with the Dollywood Foundation is servicing a large number of counties in this state through an initiative that started through Senator Morales. Um, and so that money funnels to us to be able to provide half the cost of books uh, for literacy programs for children under the age of five. That's one of the greatest programs we could have and what it means to children that are either in areas that typically may not get something like that, but also because it's something that's uh, for some of those economically disadvantaged families that may not have another opportunity otherwise. And then of course, this is also one of our, our, our um, other contracts, which is through the EDA program. And then we have other mem uh, member annual agreements, which include you know, what kind of services we're gonna provide, but most importantly that we can also enter other agreements with the local governments, which can include anything from developing a comprehensive plan to grant administration, to being a fiscal agent or anything of that type. So other services, um, we do a large number of grant applications that include anything from CDBG to nonprofits to uh, nonprofit um, funding sources. We also work a lot with USDA, New Mexico Finance Authority. And so that, again, is something that takes a while to learn how all these funding mechanisms work and where it could be that one-stop shop again. So one of the things that I do a lot with my local government is I really assist them with developing their capital improvement plans because I play a very active role in seeking and, build, and filling out the capital outlay uh, uh, request form and making sure that that's all consistent with our local legislators. And so you'll find a couple of other clogs that do that as well, but that's just something that our lo local legislators are, are really wanting us to play a role in. Again, we do traffic counts, we do know a number of planning, we've done some comprehensive plans, we've done economic development plans, we have also um, have done some affordable housing plans as well, and anything that we find that the local government has a need. Again, we have technical assistance, 
We provide assistance for requests for proposals, housing outreach, and literacy. So these are just a few of the things that we are working on currently, but not to say that there isn't more because it's just too diverse. But I like to, uh, if we could change the slide, jo um, Joanna, and I'm gonna have Emily Gojkovic, who's my deputy director, talk about economic recovery in our region. Priscilla, and I'm still not sure if she is able to access the audio. Okay, it doesn't look like I was going to check my phone really quick because she thought she had called in, but maybe not. Yeah, we've been exchanging some. So I guess maybe not. So I guess what I have to do is just go ahead and jump in. Anyway, um, I wanted to kind of just, Emily really likes this picture. I like it a lot as well. This is fireworks over in Southern Hidalgo County. And it's a beautiful picture. We have a wonderful photographer out there that does these pictures. So we're gonna share that with you. But some of our economic recovery um, efforts include is that we did hire an economic recovery specialist. She's been helping us with um, trying to secure other funding sources for other organizations and local governments. Just because there's been so many, it's it's been, quite difficult for us to keep a handle on it. And then uh, one of the major roles our economic recovery funding is gonna be used for is to create and maintain a regional bus business database. So we'll be doing that for the entire region, utilizing main streets and other mechanisms to be able to gain all of those business contacts within the region. So we have one database with all that information. And I think in times of COVID, that would be a great place in order for us to be able to disseminate information um, effectively and efficiently. Uh, we're also going to be building a regional uh, um, business retention and expansion program. We will be partnering with other chambers as well as in the region to make sure that we're doing that effectively as well. And then one of the biggest things that we want to thank EDA for is really helping us update our organization's technology and software. Um, typically, you know, we sometimes have had to have had to struggle to be able to, to make uh, ends meet in order to be able to provide the services that we provide. We could not do that without the support of our local governments who give us membership fees for the things that we do for them. We also are doing an entrepreneur training program uh, for those that want to start business called Co-Starters. It's already been extremely successful in our region. And Emily is working on trying to do a program for the youth called Generate. And then there's another program tied into that, which is called Rebuild. So we will be working on that. And we do have um, ongoing classes and the classes are filling up even during times of COVID. So there's just a shift in what people wanna do for their future. And then lastly, we see, we're see we going to seek and provide technical assistance for funding opportunities. So we've done some of that already. And of course, through EDA has been one way, but we are also looking at some of the other nonprofits. We do have a nonprofit status. And so we're able to provide that kind of technical assistance. So that, that concludes the portion on the Southwest. We're gonna move on to Evan Williams, who's the director of the Northwest um, Council of Governments. Hey, good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Priscilla. Uh, again, my name is Evan Williams. I'm the executive director for the Northwest New Mexico Council of Governments. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Uh, my region uh, is a three county region in Northwest New Mexico, basically the, the, the New Mexico portion of the four corners. So the counties and communities of San Juan, McKinley and Cibola. We cover a large territory. Obviously, if we were a state, we'd be just behind West Virginia. We serve 235,000 people. Uh, our organization was formed officially as the three county area in 1972. We have a large uh, board of directors covering all the municipalities and counties in our region, as well as some special districts. Uh, we're, we're charged with a large territory and a lot of services. And we've got six folks um, that, that make us up uh, and keep us working uh, to help our region every day. So we're, we're lean, we're mean, uh, and we're mandated to have some, some major impacts and change 
Uh, the way we break down our services is kind of in three buckets. So we look at it as local and regional uh, services. We have uh, work programs with all of our members that are customized to their needs, uh, helping them with plans, technical assistance, capacity building, resource uh, engagement and deployment. Um, and so all of those things are kind of in our, our local and regional government services. We have some base programs that we receive every year. We've got a contract with the Economic Development Administration uh, to create the global strategy for our economic development in our region. Um, we're mandated to implement that plan, evaluate and keep track of, of our impacts across a number of metrics. Um, we have a special relationship with EDA. We are kind of their regional representatives from the Austin office. We're their field agents. We're trying to get them good investments, building a portfolio, portfolio of projects that they can invest in as well as other state and federal resources. Our COG runs a revolving loan fund that was capitalized by EDA some years ago. We're looking for uh, some new CARES Act funding, some new regulation to kind of free that up and unleash that again in our region. Uh, we have a transportation planning function, the regional planning, uh, regional transportation planning organization that we're able to convene uh, to bring local officials, technical providers to the table to talk about transportation issues, challenges, strategies, projects to move our region forward, literally. And then we have a center of regional innovations. The COGS are great at taking local problems and creating solutions that are regional. And so we deploy a lot of those things that become programs and staples uh, to our council of governments. So moving to the next slide, uh, all that's to say, what do you, what do you really do? Um, and this is what I tell people I do every day, my staff does every day. And it's really about breaking down all these different government silos and coming up with strategies, uh, figuring out how to fund projects, get things done in our region, bring people, partners, and projects together. And so um, this page is really important to me. Um, we're kind of like AAA when a local government kind of crashes, falls off the road, has a flat tire, they call us. So how do we get it back on track? We're there in a, a moment's notice to kind of not do it for them, but do it with them, especially with some of our small rural communities. Um, once communities are, are moving down the road and they call us and they say, hey, can you help us set the vision? Can you help us the comprehensive plan? Can you can you show us where we're, we're trying to get to? And so we help them with the planning process. And then once they have the plan, it's kind of like, hey, we got to get stuff done. Can you help us do that too? And we we flip into what we call project tiering, taking a project from idea all the way to funding, to completion, to asset management. And so we, we believe in kind of a 365 day a year planning process and a 360 degree portfolio of investments that we can help you attract. Um, next slide, please. And then just getting to kind of the, the, the detail for today, again, we have the three circles that EDA has invested in us um, to create and implement a regional recovery plan. We actually drafted ours up in March. Um, it integrates, it rolls up local things that are going on and strategies, and hopefully we'll connect to the statewide strategy. Um, we've also been hiring up and investing in our organization uh, to move us forward. Obviously, you need to be able to put the oxygen mask on first uh, before you can go and help the rest of the people on the plane. So we're actually taking some of those resources and providing some technology and, and staffing capacity to help ourselves, help those in our region. And then we're, we're able to provide technical assistance and capacity building. So early on, one of, the, one of the things we did was survey our region to try to understand where they wanted us to focus our effort on the lever where we could put our back into something that would help us with our recovery. What we started to see is a number of things really concentrated around broadband. And so our, our number of our strategies are connected to broadband and technology deployment, uh, obviously making the transition into the new normal. So with our shovel ready sites, we got to have broadband to these economic certified sites that we're marketing. Uh, new growth industries that we were targeting before COVID-19 obviously are, are super dependent on having that broadband uh, redundancy 
uh, and and having those those resources. Workforce development, we've got great programs. Now we can't do them in person. We've got to move those to the cloud. We've got to deploy again broadband resources to keep those uh, workers, especially in our region, transitioning from resource-based jobs to the future jobs in our, our region. Healthcare, we've got to be able to go to telemedicine. We've got several hospitals that didn't have redundancy. We worked on EDA grants, hopefully to get some deployment of broadband to make sure we can keep those hospitals running. So that, that's kind of some of the strategy in ours. Obviously there's actions, goals, and other things in it, but I just wanted to focus on how important broadband is centrally to all the things that we're working on. And then what we did with our region was just ask them how the COG, the district, what, what we could do to help move things forward. There's a number of things that we were already doing, thinking about doing, do every day. Um, and there's other things. Uh, they really wanted us to get our revolving loan fund back up and running. They wanted us to uh, basically uh, create a VISTA program that could be used uh, to help bring capacity. There's a lot of college kids staying home this year. So we're trying to capitalize on that human capacity. Um, they wanted to uh, basically get out of the avalanche of, of things, um, of, of grant opportunities that hit them every day and have the COG kind of find them, funnel them and follow up on them. So that's a number of things that we're doing in our uh, regional economic recovery and thanks to EDA for, for that investment. Thank you. Thank you, Evan, and we'll go on to the next and we're gonna uh, visit with J.R. Miho. He's the Executive Director of South Central Council of Government. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Priscilla. Um, and, and thank you to the State Economic Development Department for, for uh, organizing this. My name is Jay Armijo. I'm the Executive Director of the South Central Council of Governments. Um, we have our main office here in Elephant Butte in Sierra County. We also have uh, satellite offices in, in Mesilla and also um, in Socorro. We cover the three counties of Socorro, Sierra, and Donianic. And uh, there are approximately two, uh, 245,000 individuals um, living in our area, and it's a, about 1,400 square miles. We've got on our board of directors, um, we've got a total of 19 members, um, 13 local governments within our district. All the, the designated local governments within our district are, 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 are members, we, and we also have five special districts. Those are all water associations. And we do have one designated legislator that serves on our board of directors, and they, they do a great job. Um, we do hold quarterly meetings, and um, our board is very active, and so we're very proud of that. Um, some of the things that, that we do here in, in, in our district, um, we do infrastructure planning like most of the other COGS do, assist with the ICIPs. Um, we also assist the special districts, a lot of those, and we also jump in there and help our senior centers in the area uh, with their ICIPs. Um, and so along with that, that, that always springboard, springboards us into helping them with, with funding opportunities. And so we go out and do uh, funding research and provide technical assistance to those entities um, that are looking for, for project money, essentially, for bricks and mortar project. And as well as um, when we can, uh, we try to help them with um, uh, programming uh, dollars as well. Um, along with some of those uh, technical assistance opportunities for funding, it also gets us involved in, in doing a request for proposals and procurement assistance for our entities uh, that don't have the capacity to develop RFPs and things like that. And so um, we've got um, some uh, three certified RFP managers on our, on our staff here at the, the Council of Governments. And so uh, that comes in handy on occasion. Um, we've got um, three um, chief procurement officers certified on our staff, so we, we help a lot, a lot with procurement. Uh, we help find those funding opportunities for our entities. Of course, um, through the ICIP process, uh, that takes us uh, up to the capital a lot to assist entities with capital outlay requests. We also assist them with reauthorizations. Uh, we help them with uh, funding requests through our Colonial Infrastructure Act program, 
which uh, this council of governments is an advisory board member to the Colonial uh, Board. We also assist them with CDBG uh, applications, the EDA applications, uh, USDA, all those other uh, uh, funding applications that are out there. We utilize a program here at the count at our council of governments um, called eCivis, and it, it's connected to grants.gov and a lot of the the um, federal programs. But it gives us the ability to um, to do quick searches for funding opportunities, and it also connects us with uh, opportunities that that may be offered more on the private sector, not necessarily uh, public. And so the, those are important too to to some of our our entities. So. Uh, we work a lot with our with our local uh, legislative delegations. We've got some great, great um, legislators in in our district, in our three counties, and and we're we're proud to work with them. Uh, we we take calls from them if they're looking uh, for information on projects, and so we try to a lot of times end up being the go between for our entities when they can't make it to to Santa Fe for for. Uh, for capital outlay questions or, or documentation, we, we fill in the gap for them there. Uh, we also are the administrative entity as well as the fiscal agent for the Southwestern Area Workforce Development Board and Region 4 Chief Elected Officials. Uh, for that program, we uh, we work in our usual three counties of, of Socorro, Sierra, and Doniana, but we also cross over into uh, Luna, Hidalgo, Grant, and Catron counties for that program. And there's uh, seven uh, uh, there's seven counties that cover that program. I believe we have eight workforce offices. There's two in, in Doniana County, uh, one in Las Cruces and one in Sunland Park for that. So uh, we provide a training reimbursement for, for businesses, job seeker services, tuition assistance, and that, those items go to help in school, out of school youth, um, adults, and dislocated workers. Um, we, we also develop the comprehensive economic development strategy for our region, and so that's that's a very important program to us. Uh, obviously, um, EDA funds us uh, to to get that uh, document created and and implemented. And so um, I, I want to mention that our our senior planner out of our Mesilla office, Tiffany Goldsby, uh, handles that program um, and does a great job for us. Uh, one of the things that we identified several years ago was that uh, we didn't have enough focus on, on tourism within our within our sets plan and so um, we uh, we have been working on implementing a a, a regional uh, travel initiative if you will and so we we developed a a website it's called it's tra travel south central new mexico um, nm.com and so we we assist our entities with promoting um, any ki kind of uh, attractions that they may have in their community or events that they would like us to to uh, promote for them. And so um, we we promote a lot of things on there, trails, desert, or lakes, obviously, our mountains, um, hiking, all, all the different things that can go on in our region, especially a lot of tourism that, that we like to promote. Um, we're like all the other cogs. We have a regional transportation planning organization, Angela Ray is our is our transportation uh, planning manager and of course that that uh, south central regional uh, uh, transit uh, transit rtpo um, they prioritize local transportation projects and they provide uh, information to the local communities um, they do have they develop policies on that board um, help with training opportunities for entities and basically we just network that um, those folks together to to help them with regional transportation planning. Uh, and so we, we again, we utilize uh, the capital alley funds for transportation projects. We work very closely with, with that MDOT that, that funds that program. Um, we even utilize uh, Colonial Civic Structure funds and CDBG through, for transportation projects over here. Um, so that, that's pretty important. One of the things that we're seeing recently uh, with the COVID and, and with the help of EDA with, with our additional funding that we're getting is we've been having a lot of requests from from uh, private businesses uh, seeking funding to assist with with their recovery efforts. So that's something that that we've been working on here and, and getting a surprising amount of calls and, and glad to take them and, and, it, and hopefully be able to point people in the right direction for uh, COVID resources. 
Uh, we do uh, fiscal agent services for our communities when they, when they especially don't meet the requirements to receive uh, state dollars. And so we'll step in and assist them uh, with fiscal agent services. We also do um, administration services uh, for grants if our uh, communities or our entities need those. Uh, throughout the years, uh, we've administered a bunch of CDBQ projects. And so those can can uh, definitely take up a lot of lot of uh, time from staff, but we're glad to assist with those should a community uh, need those. Um, our regional planning efforts are ongoing as all the other COGS as well have the, the same issues with, with a bunch of different entities doing plans. Um, I just saw a, a, a flash assessment today from the Middle Rio Grande Economic Development Association. And so I know that, that people are out there and of course everybody's working on different recovery uh, type plans. And so uh, with that, I just wanted to mention a few uh, key personnel here at the COG that are working on some of these issues. These aren't all the, the personnel at the COG. We actually have 11 employees, about half of those employees uh, work with the uh, the workforce development program, um, but I'm going to uh, start with uh, Steve Grant. He does our workforce uh, innovative and innovation and opportunity act uh, programming. He's the administrator for the Southwestern Area Workforce Development Board. And, uh, Angela Real again is our RTPO uh, manager. Uh, Gwen Valentino is is a is a uh, projects manager out of our SCORE office, and Tiffany Goldsby again works out of Mesilla. And with that, right now, I'm gonna turn it over to Joe McClintock, and he's gonna talk more about our, directly about our recovery uh, act activities that we're gonna be undertaking. And I'm gonna go ahead and sign off, and then uh, I look forward to being um, on the call at the end to answer any questions that you all have. Go ahead, Joe. All right, thank you, Jay. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, like Jay said, I'm Joe McClintock, I'm the recovery coordinator for the South Central Council of Governments. Uh, for the last two months, we've been onboarding and training two uh, recovery coordinators, myself, and then we have another contracted one. Um, we've been assisting in the development of a regional economic development plan, and of course, this will coincide with the state plan when that starts rolling out. Uh, we're upgrading our technical resources. You know, we talk a lot about uh, broadband limits in rural counties. We're here to help you. Uh, even in this office, we have to coordinate who can be on Zoom at the same time. So uh, we increased our, our broadband and purchased some equipment. So not only can we host meetings, but we can host meetings for businesses or businesses can host meetings through us. They can attend some of the regional and state meetings. Uh, we are the administrative entity for Workforce Connections. So we integrated our programs. So now when we talk with small employers or all employers, we can address our workforce needs and uh, the recovery needs and we do apply technical assistance for the funding so most of our day is spent on the phone with with small businesses helping them identify and uh, fill out the incredible process of the applications uh, but since some, a lot of the larger funds are starting to dry up like the ppp if it hasn't already we've been spending a really incredible amount of time trying to reach out and see what what other projects are out there what other resources are out there and there's actually quite a few. So we're trying to tie these resources with individual businesses. And uh, and that can be hard to do in, in, in the rural New Mexico, especially when you can't go out and meet face to face with the businesses. But uh, some of the institutions we've had a lot of a lot of luck with is the uh, New Mexico Farmers Marketing Association, Con Elmo, of course, the Community Foundation. Uh, there is a uh, local food supply chain response fund that still has a few dollars left in it. Uh, if you have a, a, a Lowe's department store in your area, they have a, a, a small communities or a rural communities relief fund. There is a, a Food Animal Concerns Trust that will help ranchers feed their livestock if they're experiencing supply chain disruptions, which a lot of ours are here in Sierra County. And then there's a lot of small businesses out there that are doing some pretty unique and incredible things. There's a, a website called Buy Tomorrow Today where you can, uh, they promote gift cards for small businesses. And it really doesn't matter the size of the business. Um, you, you can, uh, if you get the, and it's free of course, and you can get your business to sign up and, and promote what gift cards they have. And, uh, and that seems to be turning a little bit of fruit for some of our businesses. And uh, Google, it's, it's, <laughs> It's, I know the community like the back of my hand, but when you're trying to find these, these um, businesses online, 
a lot of them don't have a presence and, and quite a few of our small businesses aren't even on Google Maps. And these are resources that I think small employers need to utilize to help them uh, expand their market share. Now, it may only increase their sales by three to 5%, but in, in these challenging times, it's, it's something worth looking into. So Google has an $800 million small business assistance program that'll help them with a, a whole plethora of programs. And so trying to coordinate those programs with the local businesses um, again, it's been insurmounting, but it's 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 a program that I personally like doing because I really like um, making those matches out there. So you know, these small programs, we realize they're not a sell, but uh, really at this point, we're trying to slow the descent of small businesses until some uh, another uh, relief package can come out of Congress, and and that has stirred up a lot of interest, and it it, it definitely keeps us busy around here. So uh, we've also been promoting all of the uh, uh, the loan processes out there from NMFA and, and a lot of the other banks and businesses. It's kind of difficult to get uh, to talk a small business into borrowing their way out of debt. So uh, those aren't moving quite as fast as, as we want to, but we are making a little bit of ground on that. And that's just about everything that we're working for currently. Our, our needs change daily. Uh, you know, we didn't anticipate this uh, uh, second shutdown here in the state of New Mexico. I guess we should have anticipated it, but it came and it affected a lot of our businesses a lot harsher than, than I thought it would initially. So, uh, and that's been keeping us quite busy as well. But uh, uh, so, can you go to the next slide, Priscilla? So, so here's our, uh, again, a, a quick summary of what we're doing here in the South Central region. And uh, there's my contact information there. So, if you know of a business that's struggling in our region, you know, please share my information. I'm doing as much outreach as I possibly can, but it's really hard when you can't go meet people face to face. And all right, no, thank you. That's all I. Joe, thank you very much. And I think, I think you stated something that we're all feeling, and that is, there just seems to be a <clears throat> change. So thank you for your comments. So now we're going to move on to the south southeastern New Mexico Economic Development District. So, um, Dora, you want to go ahead? Yes, thank you, Priscilla. And thank you, Enemy DD, for giving us this opportunity. Uh, my name is Dora Batista, and I'm the director of the COG for the southeast portion of the state, which is District 6. This district consists of the counties of Chavez, Eddy, Lee, Lincoln, and Otero. We also have the Mescalero Apache tribe in our district. We have 21 municipalities within our five counties and numerous water associations. Geographically, we are the largest planning district in the state covering over 26,000 square miles. Our region is rich in agriculture, tourism. We have the highest oil producing county in the nation, Lee County. Eddy County is not far behind in oil production. We have the White Sands National Park and Carlsbad Caverns, Billy the Kid Museum, UFO Museum, several great other museums, skiing, horse racing, End of the Mountain Gods, and several other great reasons for you to come to the southeast region of the state. As with the other COGS, I sound like a tourism person. As with the other COGS, our funding does come from the federal EDA and from DFA and dues from our member governments. We get a lot of support from them, grant administration, and fiscal agent services. We are a designated economic development district by the federal EDA, the regional transportation planning organization under NMO, NMDOT. And our services are similar to what you have heard from the other COGS. We do focus on a couple of other areas. Um, we do provide technical assistance to our member governments. Uh, we assist in obtaining funding from the different federal and state funding agencies for much needed infrastructure projects and planning. We act as the fiscal agent for a city or a county if they're in audit trouble. We assist with the ICIP process. We work with our local governments in updating their comprehensive plans, and we're currently working on obtaining funding to create asset management plans for them. We do work closely with the Colonius Infrastructure Board to obtain Colonius funding for the Coloniuses in our area. We do strategic planning through our regional SEDS, our comprehensive economic, economic development strategy. And we do a considerable amount of a grant administration for the CDBG program, 
Colonius grants, capital outlay, and others. It isn't unusual for us to be handling up to about 18 CDBG grants at once, about eight to 10 Coloniuses. It's a lot of work, but that, that's a, a good source of income for us, and it keeps us well in tune with what the needs are in our member governments. And we start off with them, uh, whether it be helping them get funding for a PER, and then we you know, make sure everything's on the ICIP, and then the next year we start looking for funding for it. So we stick with them from start to finish on that. And whatever other types of assistance as needed or requested by our member governments. Uh, for example, one of our cities uh, did not have a city manager for a period of time. And we had a staff member go down and actually help them and act as the acting city manager for three or four months there. So uh, one of our large focuses that we are involved in each year is the capital outlay pr process. Up until this year, we hold uh, application workshops each year, teaching uh, our member governments the most effective way to complete the capital outlay form. We gather those capital outlay requests and we arrange for our member governments to present their projects before our local legislators and answer any questions that they have. This year is a little different because of the pandemic and because there's a new online form and the process that has been created to tie directly to your ICIP form. So the state should be holding a capital outlay workshop soon to provide guidance on these new forms and new process, and you'll submit these requests online. We still plan to give our member governments an opportunity to present those projects before our local legislators and answer any questions they may have. Uh, Pre-COVID, we maintained a presence in Santa Fe during each session uh, to keep track of legislation that was important to our member governments, assist our legislators, and track capital outlay. This year, things are going to be a little different, and we aren't quite sure how the legislation, legislative session is going to go, but we plan to play a role, uh, be of service to our governments in whatever that role will turn out to look like, and that the extent we're allowed to be up there or assist. Uh, Hubert Quintana, our former COG director, is a consultant to our COG for this process. Uh, Hubert, do you have anything to add to what I just said? Yeah. No, I think that was pretty good, uh, Dora. Um, the process is going to be electronic. Everything's going to be taken care of. You put in your your ICIP number. It'll fill out your, your request form. You just need to check it to make sure that it's right. The language, as I used to tell my folks all the time, 25 words or less. And so that's what you're going to have on your ICIP, on your capital outlay request form, 25 words or less. And then you can take care of additional language in your grant agreement. Uh, the, even the signatures are going to be electronic from our legislators, so you won't be able to go, uh, go searching uh, for those guys because we don't know whether or not they are going to be available to you with the possibility of the Capitol building being closed. So uh, that'll help the process along quite a bit. Um, again, we'll track all the capital outlay in our region for our local governments and the other public entities that submit uh, under capital outlay. Um, and uh, I think that's really about all. I just, just like to add one thing, Dora. Uh, I like to tell people that Southeastern New Mexico is the land of green chili and green people. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Hubert. So we have, like the other COGS, received CARES Act funding through EDA, and we assisted with the EDA CARES Act applications for projects uh, that were a direct result of or in response to COVID. We have shored up our technical capabilities. We are currently revamping our conference room to make it available for business webinars or area training for the region. If someone in our area needs to hold uh, a webinar or a small class, you know, social distance wise, they're welcome to use our room. Um, we're in the process of creating a re regional economic recovery plan for the Southeast. We've had such great regional collaborations with the different economic sectors in our region, aviation, oil industry, tourism, agriculture, the different chambers of commerce, uh, our Main Street program, 
Uh, our county economic development corporations are all on our economic recovery team. And we're so very fortunate to have Debbie Lee working for us as an economic recovery coordinator. You may have interacted with her in, as a role in some of her other jobs, but now she's retired, lucky for us, and working for us as a consultant. She has so many years of, of experience working there. So if uh, Debbie, if you're on, if you could just give a brief summary, I'll, you could explain it better than I um, on Thank the you, economic recovery plan. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. As Dora mentioned, um, I'm Debbie Lee. I just retired from city management after 30 plus years and have been asked to help uh, Dora and Hubert in the Southeast Council of Governments. Um, I see it as a great opportunity to really work with people and find uh, creative ways to address the impacts that they're having uh, with this COVID-19. So the first thing I did was uh, an, an, I analyzed the gross receipts tax, lodgers tax, aviation, a variety of industries to see just how bad the impact was. And uh, completed a, the first evaluation and, and, and provided it to, uh, to Dora and the board of directors. Um, it shows in this first from uh, March until June, $15 million is the direct loss of revenue to the counties and cities in our district. And, um, and that, that's from all the various industries. And as has been mentioned, oil and gas in, in Southeast New Mexico, specifically Lee and Eddy County, have seen the greatest loss and the greatest impact. Um, followed by uh, oil and gas is retail. Um, so many of our smaller communities, especially, they count on retail and food and accommodations. So those are the two uh, next industries that have seen, seen the greatest loss. And so I'm continuing to update that information. I'll have a second evaluation ready to go. Um, for our group uh, here next week. Um, we have formed an economic recovery team and it represents the local governments and the industries that uh, support those local, local governments. And we have a really good turnout. We've got a good group of people that are participating. It is kind of tough doing the whole remote thing and not being able to shake hands and see people but it's working out and we're making some progress and we've chosen to uh, launch a couple of surveys uh, we're going to be surveying our businesses our business district and industries um, as one survey and then the second one will be the um, uh, local governments and cities and counties uh, the best news of this uh, process is the involvement from our uh, main street associations and our chambers of commerce they've agreed and have offered to help us get these surveys out to uh, their businesses and then we'll be working with uh, our local governments and counties to get uh, get the survey out to them the purpose of this is to is to just as been mentioned by a couple of the other recovery folks is to really understand what they're doing what the impact has been what they're doing and we believe that there's going to be some creative opportunities come as a result of this. You're seeing it all over uh, New Mexico, all over um, the United States, where people are changing their business model and they're coming up with a different way to sustain their business activity with some sort of reoccurring revenue. And so I think it's important for us to have that one-on-one -on -one conversations with as many businesses and, and governments as we can so we can understand what those impacts are and exactly what they're doing and how we can uh, support and, and assist them. We know we've, we've talked amongst our committee about um, training and making boardrooms and technology. Broadband is just a real uh, struggle in uh, New Mexico and in some of our communities. And so that's gonna be something we really have to, have to tackle. Uh, and I see that as being a big uh, ticket item in the recovery effort. So as we collect this information, we're going to be building a foundation for our recovery plan. The purpose is to have a sustainable plan, something that 
that will guide our municipalities and counties and, and assist our businesses and those industries that, that have been impacted. And um, it's interesting, we're out of the Austin district and I'm actually in Texas for a while and seeing what, what they're doing here be, uh, with the uh, tornadoes and the hurricanes. And then of course, and you know, we had the so many fires and the Dolly flood and Rio Doso and, and so there's a lot of lessons to be learned uh, from that. And so the plan, the recovery plan needs to capture those best practices and lessons learned so that we can really create a new normal that bridges resources and relationships so that we can be of great benefit to our communities and the people that we serve. So I'm just grateful for the opportunity to work with Dora and the board and Hubert. They, uh, the, these folks work hard. Uh, being in city management for all the years I've been in, we utilized uh, the council governments and, and I know how important they are. And now that I'm on this side of the fence and, and see how much they do for municipalities and communities and counties, I really encourage us all to leverage our time and resources and support the efforts that are going on and greatly appreciate this time to talk to you guys today. So, Dora. Thanks, Debbie. And yeah. uh, thanks to the participants that are, you know, on today for their interest in the COGS. We are a very valuable asset to your community. And if you aren't using the COG in your area, please look up the staff and get to know them. And you can visit our website at snmedd.com for more information. Thank you. Thank you, Dora. And I just want you to know that Debbie has a fan club because the questions, they're happy to have you back. So Debbie, see, so you couldn't be in retirement for too long. <laughs> no, you just don't ever retire, you Priscilla. <laughs> thank you. And I, you know, we have a, we do have a wonderful team around the state. So thank you, Dora, for for your presentation. We'll go on to Mid-Region Council of Governments and we've got two presenters and we're gonna start with Maida. I think that works. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Maida Rubin. Uh, I'm a senior planner at the Mid-Region Council of Governments located in Albuquerque. Um, I'm joined today by Peyton Showalter. She's a regional planner at the COG. Um, so really, really briefly, I'm going to uh, go over our COG area and some of our services we provide. Um, and then I'm going to hand things over to Peyton to talk a little bit about the EDA grant um, and some of our COVID-related economic response activities we've been up to so far. Um, and actually, we've been able to um, bring Peyton on full time to work on this grant. So she's been a huge asset so far. We're really, really grateful to have her with us. Um, so, as the name may suggest, um, Mid-Region Council of Governments is uh, located in central New Mexico. We are comprised of Sandoval, Bernalillo, Valencia, Torrance, uh, and southern Santa Fe counties. And we are home to uh, a very diverse range of communities, uh, all the way from bigger communities such as Albuquerque and Rio Rancho, uh, down to communities of 80 or less people. Um, we also are home to um, a number of tribal entities, special districts, and uh, we serve the counties themselves. Uh, the programs we provide are the Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Regional Transportation Planning Organization, Rio Metro, which focuses on uh, regional transit and uh, is home to the Rail Runner, uh, Workforce Connection, Economic Development, and the Regional Planning Program. Uh, the regional planning program is where Peyton and I work, um, and we provide technical assistance and planning to our member governments uh, upon request. And I really appreciate what Evan mentioned about AAA. Uh, that's kind of how we work is uh, on, re on request in response to uh, the needs of our member entities. So we provide uh, workshops and trainings, assistance with ordinance revisions and comprehensive plan updates, mapping services, uh, grant application assistance, and uh, data services when required, uh, including census data, traffic counts, and the like. Uh, so our ongoing outreach with our communities has been a real asset as we've been working uh, within this EDA grant to provide economic redevelopment assistance. And I'm going to turn this over to Peyton to talk a little bit about what we've done so far 
uh, some of our lessons learned at this very early stage in the grant and our next steps so far. Thanks, Maida. So first, I'm going to talk briefly about our economic development planning efforts. And mostly, I'm going to focus on the technical assistance that we're providing both our communities and our local businesses with the funding we receive from this EDA COVID-19 response grant. So the mid-region um, does have a comprehensive economic development strategy that was just updated in 2020. It was um, at the beginning in January, it was updated. And so we are going to use some of our recovery funds to do an addendum to this document that focuses on our response to the pandemic and resiliency moving forward. We plan to um, coordinate this addendum with the statewide plan that's being developed. And we'll take some of the goals that were outlined in our SEDS that have become more relevant because of the pandemic and create some more specific strategies that are going to help us meet those goals. So we plan to do this addendum a little bit down the road. And right now we're focusing our main efforts on providing our communities and businesses with technical assistance, which I'll go into more detail now on the next slide. So some of the work that we have done so far was first we, um, at the beginning of the summer, we hosted a training. It was a statewide webinar that focused on hosting remote public meetings. And this included a review on the Inspected Inspection of Public Records Act and the Open Meetings Act. We also have created a new page on our website where we are posting um, resources for both our businesses and community. We, communities, we have resources to help our businesses to increase their online presence. We have links uh, to websites where businesses can go to find resources that are located in their geographic area. And we also have links to New Mexico organizations who provide webinars, mentorships, and workshops. Some of the other work we have done so far is to create a outdoor dining guide. We created this um, towards the beginning of the summer that we distributed to our communities and posted on our website. We created this because we knew the restaurant industry had been hit quite hard by the COVID restrictions. And so we wanted to help the restaurants in our communities be able to increase their capacity, but still operate in a safe way. So we created this guide for our communities to facilitate um, the expansion of outdoor dining while still maintaining some restrictions, such as maintaining ADA accessibility. And before we decided what other types of technical assistance we're going to provide with this grant, we wanted to reach out first to our communities to get their input on what type of assistance would be the most useful to them. So we reached out to all of our communities to set up a virtual meeting. And so far we've met with nine of them. As we've been meeting with them, we've been asking how they feel overall their community is doing and how their businesses are doing, what their main problems are. And they've expressed that their very small and service related businesses, of course, have been hit the hardest. A lot of the small businesses in the mid region area did not have an online presence before the pandemic. So they weren't able to quickly adapt to having only being able to operate online during the first shutdown. We've also heard from our communities that some of their large stores, like their grocery stores and hardware stores, are actually seeing an increase in sales and that their home-based businesses were typically doing well. And the communities have said that their trails and outdoor recreation areas are seeing a lot more use. So as we met with our communities, we also asked them what types of economic development programs are already going on. And in most every community, the main focus at the time was dispersing the funds they received for small business grants through the CARES Act. And as they did this, they realized that they didn't have necessarily a quick and easy way to communicate with all the businesses in their community. They found the best way was to call individual businesses or um, go door to door posting flyers to let everyone know about this funding opportunity. And they also reported that they didn't have as many applicants as they expected. They felt that this is because either the businesses didn't have the necessary documentation and financials that they needed to apply, and also because these um, the turnaround time for these funding opportunities have been very short, 
And so it may not allow the businesses enough time to assemble the documents necessary to apply. So from this feedback from our communities, we decided to really set our current focus for this grant work on connecting both our communities and the businesses to the resources that they need. So we wanna help make sure we get the word out to our communities and to the businesses quickly when we hear about new opportunities. We have a newsletter that we send out and we're gonna keep our website up to date. We also wanna help connect the businesses in the mid region to training opportunities, especially with these funding move being so quickly, it's really important that the businesses have their financials in order so that they can quickly apply. So we're first going to do this by promoting the free trainings that are already out there. Uh, we are creating a business flyer that can be posted around town, posted on communities' websites and their social media. That way we can reach as many businesses as possible to let them know about trainings that are coming up. And we know that some of the businesses might not be able to access a virtual training either because they don't have a computer or internet access. So on these flyers, we plan to list our contact information so that they can get in touch with us and we can set up a space where a few people can go to um, participate in the training, either borrow a computer or have a space where they can access internet to participate in these virtual trainings. And we're hoping to partner with some of these organizations to create some more tailored trainings um, that are especially relevant to the businesses in the mid-region. And so as we move forward with this grant work, we want to continue to receive input from our communities so that we can make sure we adjust our technical assistance to match the changing circumstances. We really want to make sure that our technical assistance remains relevant to all of our communities. And I've added the link to our website at the bottom of the slide. And uh, we'll be happy to answer any of your questions at the end. Thanks. OK, thank you. So moving on to the Eastern Plains Council of Governments, Executive Director Sandy Chancy. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Sandy Chancy. I'm the Executive Director of Eastern Plains Council of Governments. Uh, our district is comprised of seven counties in Northeast New Mexico, Union, Curry, Guadalupe, Roosevelt, DeBaca, Harding, and Quay. We are largely agricultural. Uh, however, we do have a large Air Force base located in Curry County. We are um, funded in much the same way as the other COGS. We receive funding from the state of New Mexico. We have a contract with the New Mexico Department of Transportation to provide transportation planning services. Uh, we're a bit unique in that our district uh, covers parts of NMDOT District 2 and NMDOT District 4. So we co-managed both the Northeast and the Southeast uh, Regional Transportation Planning Organizations with the uh, North Central Economic Development District and the Southeast Economic Development District. Can I get the next slide, please? In addition to our, our transportation planning, of course, um, we provide technical assistance uh, with just about anything our communities need, grant administration, grant writing, of course, comprehensive planning, ICIP preparation, um, legislative assistance, economic analysis, data, data analysis, uh, data gathering, and of course, economic development, as we are a federally designated economic development district. Through our economic development planning, we are also um, under an additional grant with the New Mexico, with the EDA to develop a regional uh, economic recovery plan. And I'm going to turn it over to Raymond Mondragon, who is our uh, governmental specialist here at EPCOG to tell you a little bit more about how we're doing that. Raymond? Good, uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you again for Joanna and uh, Secretary uh, John Clark for having us here today. I uh, wanted to talk a little bit in touch of what Sandy said uh, of what's been going on here in the eastern New Mexico part of our region. And of course, we, we, we operate and work under some core values here at Eastern Plains Council of Governments, good customer service, teamwork, good character, 
and excellent and high standard work by our employees. And that's part of our mission statement and our policy statement. And so it's real important that we do that with our communities here in Eastern New Mexico. Uh, as she said, we do uh, service the numerous counties, 20 communities within those counties. We are a microplex. And uh, I know that Dora had mentioned they've got the largest. And we have uh, 18,064 square miles that we serve uh, here in Eastern New Mexico. And so when the pandemic COVID-19 hit uh, New Mexico and hit the country, uh, we had to do a lot of adjustments. And part of that was when we were working from home, we went in, got the Zoom like everybody else, got all the, the social media network, in, in order to communicate with our member agencies. And so we started doing Zoom meetings with our member communities so we could check upon them to see what is it that they need from us as the Council of Governments. And then of course, then the EDA came up with the CARES Act, which we applied and we were received funding. That was really important. We've also have handled legislative forums with our region. Uh, so, uh, that has been very helpful. We have an upcoming legislative forum that is virtual coming up on December the 17th. And that is just to keep in contact with all of our elected officials within our member agencies so we can discuss what's going on within the legislature. And we have a possibility of a special session coming up before the 60-day session. There's questions about that is what's going to happen within the 60-day session. So a lot going on there. A lot of you that are aware of that as well. We assist with capital outlay, with CDBG, with ICIP. Uh, in our website, we also have COVID-19 resources that are available that people can go in within our website. And, and then the COVID-19 updates within our website. So that's really important. And so with the EDA fund that we got on the CARES Act, the Economic uh, Recovery Plan, we hired two individuals. Uh, Jason Espinoza, uh, who a lot of you know, uh, KW consultant, and he's also the lobbyist for the Mexico Idea. And uh, we also hired Dr. Robert Hegervert. Uh, he is an expert with Mexico State University in Ag Sciences. He also knows six different languages that he speaks. And he want, we wanted in Eastern New Mexico to target the dairy industry, agriculture, the farming, uh, everything having to do with agriculture. And uh, Debbie Lee has had a, the pleasure of meeting Dr. Robert Hegervert, and he, he told us that he had some good conversations there in Chavez County. And so he will be assisting us with the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic within those clusters, uh, within the agriculture and the dairy industry of how hard we've been hit. And of course, we worked with Dora, uh, with Dora's uh, Council of Governments as well, when we worked towards industry clusters, if you will. We, we discussed energy, defense and security, transportation and logistics, agribusiness and food processing, and, uh, and then towards the south is a little bit of mining. And so uh, this recovery plan is, is to look at what we can do in Eastern New Mexico as Eastern Plains Council of Governments to assist our communities with their recovery efforts in the recovery plan. As Sandy made the comment is we have Cannon Air Force Base, which is a vital uh, economic uh, impact within our community. It's $600 million a year. And so defense is really important for this area. So uh, Robert, Dr. Robert Hegervert and Jason will be contacting all of our partners and member agencies. Uh, they have been provided the contact list. We'll be creating the economic uh, COVID-19 impact committee and, and so in working towards hopefully assisting them in the technical and, and referring them and assisting them with whatever grants that are available out there. So that's what we've been doing, kind of give you an idea uh, we also, and I'll finish with this, is we are in the process of completing, we got a contract with the city of Clovis to do the Local Cares Act to assist communities with 
uh, rental, mortgage, utility assistance, childcare. And as of today, uh, we have 59,498 total payments to individuals. Uh, we have about $9,000 left from the $70,000 fund. 157 accounts have been paid to the citizens that have required some assistance. So a lot going on around the state with helping uh, our New Mexicans with uh, very, very important needs that they have. And so this is where we're all, we're involved. We're all in this together. And uh, I'll be happy to answer or take any questions that anybody might have. Okay, thank you, Sandy and Raymond. And we'll go on to Monica. She's our last presenter and then we'll be available for questions. Hi, everybody. Um, do I need to turn on my webcam here, Priscilla? There we go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Monica Abeta. I'm the Executive Director of the North Central New Mexico Economic Development District. And I know we have um, many of our team members on the call from our Community Development Department. Um, I'm going to kind of be a little briefer than everyone else because I realize we're running out of time. But um, I do have our economic, our community and economic development team on the call, Lisa, Allison, Steve, Keith, and Rebecca. And we also have our board president, Ernesto Salazar, who's on the bar, uh, on the call with us today. So thanks, thanks everybody for attending. Um, we do a lot of great work, but we have to do it together because we're a small, a small but mighty force. So um, I think, um, you know, most of the core functions of the councils of government have been covered in, pr in pretty good detail. So I'm just going to cover some of the unique things we do at North Central and some of the things that we're doing um, specific to the COVID recovery effort. So, um, you know, US EDA work, we had almost a dozen applications go in for CARES Act funding this year, so we've been extremely busy helping those local governments and other organizations submit CARES Act applications. I think we're the only council of governments that is right now updating its uh, comprehensive economic development strategy. So you're hearing from a lot of the other COGS that they're producing like a recovery document or a recovery plan. Ours will be um, done as part of our our SUDS update. And so what I expect next year is we're going to be doing um, more implementation of that around specific industry clusters and um, specific uh, targets for recovery efforts. Um, those will probably, like I said, industry clusters, um, economic development recovery, but also infrastructure and asset development that we're identifying in the SEDS. I think everyone has talked about broadband as being one of those needs. So we'll be looking at that. Housing is another area that um, that we've been getting a lot of feedback on from our communities. So um, those are things that you'll you'll be seeing us working on next year in implementation. Um, we handle a number of CDBG grants, as do the other COGS. And as mentioned before, you know we can kind of get into that process at any stage. Uh, sometimes it's it's uh, administration of the CDBG project. One of the projects we're working on now, Darren's place in um, Española is actually a kind of soup, soup to nuts project for us. We started by helping them with their CDBG grant application. Now we're managing, um, we're administering that grant with them. That's a rehabilitation, a substance abuse rehab center that was converted from a nursing home. So sometimes we end up doing some really creative projects that mean a lot to the community um, always. Um, and then I'm going to skip some of these others because uh, they've been discussed in a lot of detail. We do, like Sandy, have a unique relationship with the RTPOs, the Regional Transportation and Planning Organizations, in that we are in two districts as well, and we co-manage the um, Northeast RTPO with the Eastern Plains COG. So let's go to the next slide. Um, while we're changing that slide, I did want to mention we're a little bit unique because Sandoval County participates in our COG as well as the COG, the mid-region COG, and that's because they were an original member of our JPA. So we do have board members from Sandoval County, and we do provide services in Sandoval County where we have overlap with the mid-region COG. We just work together to figure out who's going to provide what type of assistance. So thanks to mid-region for always kind of coordinating uh, with us on that. Um, before I start on this slide, a couple of things I just forgot to mention. Um, you know, I think one of the things all of us try and do is look at the places where there's a gap and where the COGS can make a difference. So we like to do strategic and catalytic projects. 
And we've done a number of those throughout the years, you know, back during era funding, American Recovery and, uh, and Reinvestment Act. We actually got the ReadyNet broadband network started up in the Espanola Valley. That was a very catalytic project that we're still involved with. Last year, we did a couple of affordable housing plans, kind of a little bit outside of, you know, our normal operations. Um, we're right now talking to the Environment Department about a pilot program for the water um, and sanitation district in our region. And um, like uh, Eastern Plains COGS, we are ha handling the CARES Act grants for Santa Fe County, the city of Santa Fe, and the, and the town of Edgewood. So all of those business uh, grants that are going out um, are, are being processed by our organization. Um, I'm going to touch on three programs that are pretty that are either exclusively unique or fairly unique to North Central. We have an EDA revolving loan fund that we've had for decades. The Northwest COG is the only other COG that has a revolving loan fund. And so we have lent um, almost three and a half million to 49 firms over the life of this uh, this revolving loan fund. Our our legacy, our, our regular revolving loan fund requires participation from a bank. So we're not the only lender. We're participating with a lender on this uh, on this loan. Um, we currently have about $300,000 available for lending, so we're trying to get that out. And we've also received some additional funds um, from the CARES Act for a program we call Working Now. These are small $10,000 loans designed to help businesses that are impacted, um, have been impacted by COVID-19. We've made a number of these loans. They're kind of trickling in. There's a lot of grant money available right now. And we're actually seeing um, some of the folks that are applying for grants, like through Santa Fe County, are starting to do both. They're starting to apply for a grant and a loan from us as well. So we're seeing some of that um, kind of coordinated activity. There's some photos of some of the um, companies we've made loans to, both in past and present, um, including the photography workshop. That's one of their photos. So let's go to the next slide. Um, the other thing that we do that's unique um, is the VISTA program. We sponsor 10 VISTA volunteers through the Corporation for Community Service, and we place those volunteers throughout our region. So those are the organizations where we have placed volunteers, where we, we have volunteers placed currently. Um, you can see some of them are local governments, some of them are nonprofit organizations. We actually have one that is uh, is working in Cibola County, which is the Northwest COGS area. And I know um, Evan is getting a program like this started up right now um, in his region as well. Um, we have a VISTA volunteer that works exclusively through us, through, for us through EDA, and that's Rebecca Seawall, our VISTA member, who's working on our comprehensive economic development strategy. So this program provides a lot of value to the region because um, we place extremely talented people in organizations that need assistance for, for no charge. So it's, it's a really nice program that, that we offer. And let's go to the next slide. And finally, um, I'm going to talk about AAA, but it's not the AAA everyone else has been talking about. So we, we run the non-metro area agency on aging. Um, we're the only COG in the state that does this. However, COGs throughout the nation do, uh, do um, run these area agencies on aging. What these are are the entities that administer federal and state funding pro and programs for older adults. Some of the programs are for 60 and over, and some of the programs are 55 and older. So if you just think about the senior center in your community, we actually administer the funding and we provide oversight for the programs that go on in all of those senior centers statewide, if we can go to the next slide, except for Bernalillo County. So we actually manage um, 55 uh, providers of aging services and uh, over 150 senior centers. Uh, this program is by far a lot larger than the other programs I talked about. It's a $20 million program, and we have about 22 staff people that work on this program. So if you wouldn't mind going back, Joanna, to the previous slide, um, I'm just going to talk about a couple of things that we're doing in this program that is related to COVID. And I'm sure you recognize immediately that because of the high-risk nature of the uh, aging population, this would be a program that would have a lot of um, a lot of changes um, now during COVID-19. So first of all, we're handling two new federal funding sources that have gone out to these programs for emergency dollars. We have had to convert all of the programming in the senior centers entirely. 
the meals that were being served to seniors in the centers are now grab and go meals rather than meals inside the centers. There's a lot more home delivery, boxes of groceries, things like that going on statewide. Um, and then uh, all of the other services that were being provided, like adult daycare, in-home services, transportation to and from activities, those have been either suspended or uh, very much uh, scaled back because of the public health order. Uh, we are seeing right now a huge increase in the number of meals being served statewide because older adults are nervous, and rightfully so, about going out and doing shopping. And so we're right now working on our numbers to try and see how we're going to sustain these programs going into the next fiscal year when some of these emergency dollars um, are no longer available. We're also looking at some creative, more creative solutions. We've been um, writing some grants and doing different things to kind of come up with, um, with additional funding, but also additional ways of doing programming. I think this population has been hit the hardest um, by social isolation. You know, they are very uh, connected to the senior centers and the activities there. So we're trying to come up with some solutions around online programming and other things that we can do. Um, so this is uh, keeping us very busy along with our economic development work. And um, that's all I have. Wanted to really thank Joanna and uh, John for letting us speak today. And for all the COGS, because I'm a very new director, I've been here a year and a half, and I appreciate all the other executive directors and all the support they've provided um, during this period. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Monica. And then John, if you go on to the last slide, thank you. So um, all I can say is what a wonderful group of people that we work with and, and, and collaborate with and the many things that we can really help one another with. And so we're very privileged to work as a team throughout the state and we do that and we meet quarterly to try to make sure that we're all working cohesively as well that's part of part of what we think is important and so i just wanted to open it up for questions how can how can we help you how can we um address your needs and what kind of questions do you have and joanna i've been going through some of the questions in the chat I don't know what. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Are you there? Yeah, we got you. I don't know what happened. Okay. Yeah, the, the, my my staff person just said they couldn't hear. So, okay. So we didn't lose anybody, did we? Okay, Joanna, are you there? There. Yes. Yeah. You want to jump into questions? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. And thank you all for hanging on. I know we're over time. Feel free to jump off because we are going to be recording this. We understand that uh, you you might have made obligations already. So um, one of the first questions I got was uh, from Luis, and he is asking how do nonprofits work with the Cogs, and and specifically looking at um, delivering business services. But maybe someone could could offer some insight into nonprofit collaborative work. So Peyton, did you have a did you want to respond to that? Um sure I can. We um definitely like to partner with some of the nonprofits who are already providing the services and so we like to try and promote the services that they provide. And typically I think the communities or businesses who are looking for a service that a nonprofit can provide, we serve as the entity to kind of connect them and build contacts for them. 
And so that's kind of how we've been approaching that. So, and I can say from my perspective, this is something that I've been working a lot in, in my region and nonprofits are pretty much a major employer, whether it's in my region or in the state. And so uh, one of the things that I've been able to do with nonprofits really is been able to connect them with local governments and the importance, uh, not only in the importance of the role that they play in the community, but how they can work collaboratively around capital outlay needs, um, services, and that sort of thing. And I think a lot of times nonprofits may think that, you know, government is beyond their reach, but I don't, you know, that's where I can come in. And the other thing we see from a legislator standpoint is sometimes legislators refer the nonprofits to me for whatever assistance they may need. So, you know, it's, it's reciprocated in several ways uh, from our perspective. Great, thank you. We had a question from Jeffrey addressing broadband. So he was raising the issue about uh, local governments don't have any control over broadband infrastructures. Where do COGS direct those funding or improvement opportunities? Priscilla, do you wanna uh, uh, explain the answer you, you gave him? Right, so as a person who has been serving on an economic relief team at the state level and on a subcommittee of the New Mexico Recovery Council. That has been an ongoing question for us. And I think one of the things they tasked me to do was to reach out to each one of the COGS and ask them for their top three priority needs. And needless to say that broadband was the top priority. Um, and so we've been discussing among that and the economic relief teams. So we absolutely understand there needs to be more um, improvement where broadband and most especially in some of those most rural areas. So part of what we're doing is we were on calls with USDA who is a major funder for some of the broadband infrastructure. But I also know that there was an award from EDA to the New Mexico do it and they will actually be per having an RFP release for um, providing some funding opportunities for broadband. And then in some other cases, we've been able to utilize if it was a small enough project to be able to link um, the fiber is that we've, or do a fiber loop, we've used some of the capital outlay dollars. I think the challenge then becomes when, with the funding of the different USDA programs is, do we have the capacity at the local level that understands the broadband enough to be able to apply? And so, at one point, we did partner with USDA, and we've had some training opportunities. And so, uh, of course, we're at a point where we're seeing more and more exposure um, to the need for broadband and in our efforts around that and trying to do everything we can to increase that capacity. Joanne, can I follow up with a couple of things on that? Sure, go ahead. Uh, this is Raymond Mondragon, Eastern Plains Council of Governments. Also, and just what uh, Priscilla was saying is broadband continues to be a discussion every year during the session of the legislature. And most of you know that there's a lot of times requests for additional funding or legislative requests. And uh, I'm also uh, president of New Mexico Idea Group, which is the economic developers for New Mexico. And we constantly address this issue as a priority. And, and I know Leo Baca with CenturyLink has gone before the PRC numerous times. Uh, so it, it continues to be a problem. Uh, I do know that Plateau here in Clovis received like a $19 million federal grant. Uh, so here in the Eastern part of in within our rural communities, we're doing pretty good with broadband, but we constantly hear that do you know that continues to be an issue? I know in the Navajo Nation it continues to be a big problem. Uh, this is Monica. Can I can I jump in on this? Yeah, please. Do you Monica. mind? So um, I was just going to add that you know what we did you know way back with at North Central with the ReadyNet project that was when there was some specific recovery funding related to broadband. You know there were millions and millions of dollars. And so ReadyNet was formed under a joint powers agreement with the state. So it's actually owned 
by local and tribal governments in northern New Mexico. So it's more like a community broadband network, but it is a uh, it is a middle mile network, which means it doesn't go to people's homes. It connects community institutions and is kind of that pipe, you know, that goes through the community. So it's interesting because um, I think, you know, we found a way to do this as a community asset, not just as grants to the providers which solves some of the problems, right? Because sometimes you can't get the providers to invest in rural areas. But now we're having a new set of problems, which is there are not enough last mile providers jumping on that middle mile network, so there's no competition. So we're dealing with a, a new set of issues. And I guess what I just wanna put out there is I think this is an area that needs constant attention. It's not like we can just build something out and then it's great, it's like then there's you know, something else that comes up. Now we have COVID, now we have distance learning going on and we've been working on, you know, this, these deployment of hotspots uh, to schools and things like that. So it's, it's, it's a really, it's a high need area and I think it's an area that we have to be putting constant attention and um, effort into because it's gonna be increasingly the backbone of, of the economies in, in the state. So thanks. Really good point, Monica and Raymond. Thank you. We had a question from Charlene for Deputy Clark, and this is referencing the statewide plan. And she is asking, how are you going to include the tribes for input? Deputy Clark. Thank you, Joanna. So uh, that's a great question. And we recently had a discussion uh, with the Indian Affairs Department about exactly this. And we're in the process of uh, finishing up drafts for RFPs that will be issued related to this planning process. And part of the work that will be done by the contractors that we're going to hire is to uh, communicate with all of the local economic development organizations, but also communicate with all of the tribes in the state, uh, both to talk to them about their assets uh, what target industries they might be interested in, uh, but also what sort of economic development in general, if any, they are interested in. Uh, we don't want to push any economic development efforts or industries on tribes that uh, aren't interested either at all or in those particular industries. So uh, we're going to be relying on these contractors to work uh, very closely with the tribes in determining what industries make sense for them, what strategies make sense for them, and that's going to then flow up into the plan. Great, thank you. And I, I'm going to take two more questions. We have some that were submitted when folks registered, and I'm trying to generalize these, but obviously we got a lot of questions around resources for businesses that have been negatively impacted by COVID. And very general throw out question to you guys, how are you providing services to businesses? I know some of you have already touched on this. Does anyone want to, to add anything, um, any insight? Um, Joanna, I can say something. This is Monica. Um, so as as I mentioned before, we have our loan funds that you know we're we're working on, and then we're you know working on those CARES Act grants as well in Santa Fe County. Um, I think when we first started doing this, we started doing a lot more outreach to chambers of commerce and organizations like that, entrepreneurial networks. Um, we had uh, Allison, who's now our community development planner, was was our technical assistance lead, and so she was reaching out to all of those groups that brought uh, businesses together and had constituencies of business that, businesses that they worked with to get the word out about the products and really just to find out what their needs were. And I think it came up on the mid-region slide. I mean, one of the things that we found is a lot of businesses are having just difficulty filling out some of the applications or they don't meet the criteria, they don't have uh, properly prepared financials and things like that. And so we're finding that that's a barrier as well as the timeframes. You know, the CARES Act grants that the local governments are putting out are supposed to be spent by the end of the year. And so that's a real challenge if we're trying to help businesses 
you know, um, who don't really have the capacity to apply for the grants get ready. Um, so I think the timing is, is a challenge. And I think the, you know, just having some of the things that more sophisticated businesses, larger businesses might have is also a challenge for our small businesses, particularly in rural areas. And, you know, we're trying to do as much outreach and support as we can on that. I know that Keith, our loan officer, is pretty much on the phone all weekend talking to small businesses wanting to apply for those CARES Act grants. So we're just trying to be as accessible as we can um, and help the businesses get get connected with the programs. And Joanna, I do believe that, as Monica said, a lot of it is that back office. And I can't reiterate enough that we have to be the advocates, right, as COGS to not only the local governments, but businesses about what your needs are, because they could differ from region to region and they differ from rural to urban, you know, and to some of the metropolitan areas. So I think that we need to do a lot of hand holding and that's where our challenges become. And Joanna, Joanna, and if I could, I know that we have a new legislator, Tara, who wanted to speak about a little bit about the broadband infrastructure. And before we do that, I do want to most um, especially thank so many of the legislators that are on the call today, new legislators who are coming in and learning about who we are and what we do. I'm extremely grateful to all of you who are participating because we are here for you. So please reach out to us if we can help you in that um, effort. So um, Tara, do you have a comment? And Tara, let me switch you over so you're able to say something. And I, I want to take a second for, for a plug for the Economic Development Department. In terms of business resources, please reach out to us, to our regional reps, to, to our uh, state office. We are working really hard with COG directors, with stakeholders to get information out to businesses. And on this next slide that I'll put up at closing, we have a link to our newsletter that we're putting out every week every Friday that has tons of grants and financial opportunities, webinars, news articles, everything to stay up to date with uh, opportunities for public, private, non nonprofit sectors. And um, as we've heard, the COG directors are a, a wonderful resource as well to know about those resources. So Representative Lujan, you should, be able to connect. It might take a second. And and while we're waiting for the uh, chair to connect, I, I do want to say, since we do have legislators um, on the call today, anything that we can do to extend some of those deadlines uh, for some of the CARES money is, is going to be a benefit to, to, to the community and to the business and to the people because Again, you know, what we think it might be a simple process does not seem to be as simple as we would like. And so we have to spend a lot of extra time assisting. So if the, if you can help us in any of those directions as far as extending deadlines or helping us, you know, to reaching out to us to help you to understand, you know, what are some of the challenges we are facing, we'd be happy to share our thoughts and ideas with all of you. So Tara, can you hear us now or can you speak? You should be able to unmute yourself, Tara. And if not. Um... Okay, then we'll just leave it at that. But um, she did put something in the chat uh, for Monica that she wants to visit with Monica, so. Great. So I do wanna thank all my fellow um, COG directors, their staff, my staff, for just helping us put um, all of this together and you, Joanna, and again, the State Economic Development Department, Department for including us as partners. Um, this is how we, we achieve success in the state of New Mexico. So thank you for your efforts. Anything else, Joanna? Well said. Uh, thank you all so much. And um, we should have known not to have slotted only an hour and a half. That is <laughs> not possible when we are talking to the COG directors. These these uh, directors are such an amazing wealth of, of information. 
such such amazing knowledge. We always can reach out to them and, and get tons of information. So please, I hope the main point and the main way that, that you have seen today is that reach out to them. They can put you into contact with the right resources and very thankful for all of their work. So the last slide in closing, this is the link I mentioned for the EDD news and updates. Here's our website for the department, find your regional rep. Here's a link to our YouTube channel that shows all previous webinars, our New Mexico Opportunity Zone website, New Mexico Small Business Development Center, my contact and Mark Roper, the division director's contact. So thank you all again, COG representatives. Thank you all for tuning in. And please reach out to us and to our panelists if you have any questions or if we can be of evidence in any way. So please take care and we will follow up with the link and the recording and the presentation. Thank you all. Thank you.